way, you can, if you really don't like what I'm going to say, you can save yourself 20 minutes and, and just run out right now. And I don't want you to, but uh, you, might, you might feel the, the need. Another title for this message, another title for this message might be Bibles or Bullets. Whichever one we want. Bibles or bullets. Take your pick. I know that's very blunt and strong, but that's the truth. That can be proven. And and I might as well, I'm going to say it to begin with, and I'm going to get back to this in a minute. You always know, you always know which view is the wrong view on any issue that comes up like this. Whichever view the news media takes, mainstream news media, is always, 100%, always the wrong view. If you are politically correct, you are scripturally perverted. There ain't no way you can be biblically right and politically correct. It's impossible. A man can't get elected to a high office in this country and really be biblically correct. It can't be done. You say, I believe if you'll really stand for what's right, they'll vote you in. <laughs> you, you can act like you do. But when it comes right down to it, if you stand for what's right, this world's not going to put their approval on you. It ain't going to happen. So you people that are trying to save the earth and make us all live happily ever after together, forget it, it ain't going to happen. So I'm going to make a statement here. And I'm going to say, my heart was, was tore up. And during the youth rally week, I didn't have a lot of time to see what happened in, in Colorado at that high school. Well, I'll tell you one thing, my heart hurt for them people. It broke my heart for them. I got to thinking, what if that would have been my kid? If that would have been one of my girls who went to school on a normal day. They said those kids were down under them desk begging for their lives. Pleading. And those two boys... The, men, the boys who committed the murder were standing there laughing at them, just blowing them away like that. Bombs in the, planted different areas of the school. There have been literally, I, I guess if they took a survey and they put statistics on TV, there would probably not be one county in America, probably not a county in America that hadn't had some kind of dis, disruptive activity or threat in school this past week. They said in the newspaper, they don't know what they're going to do. They're afraid people ain't, enough people ain't going to show up tomorrow for classes so that they can even have a class and teach the subjects. So I'm going to make this statement, and then I'm going to make a few points and let you go, just give you something to think about for a little while. Um, it bothers me greatly that the news media is doing all this big rigmarole about guns and how guns cause this problem. And I want to tell you this morning, guns are not the blame for what happened in Colorado. And if you think it is, there's two things wrong with you. You're brainwashed by the, t the television, and you ain't been reading your Bible very much. You say, if you think that if we got rid of all the guns, that stuff like that's not going to happen anymore, you're out of your mind. I want to say again, now, I know some of you will get mad at me. And I don't know why I always have to say stuff like this. I know there'll be people mad. There'll be people in here saying, Danny Castle said there's nothing wrong with guns. Uh, you can tell them I said that. You can tell them I said that. Just make sure you tell them the rest of what I'm going to say. Make sure you tell them the rest of what I'm going to say. Some folks got mad at me for last Friday night, what I did. Out there at the tent. And the Lord, I told you before I started. I told you, I said, this. It, my purpose is not to hurt nobody's feelings. I know we have people in our church who believe, or believe different ways. There's kin folks believe. That wasn't my purpose. You need to be mature enough to understand. I was just simply trying to show those kids the truth. And that's what I did. The truth shouldn't hurt you if you're a Christian. The truth shouldn't offend you if you love the truth. Now, if you love this book, and somebody tells you, you ought to rejoice in the truth. Amen? I've got kin folks that believe a lot of crazy things. But I'm going to rejoice in the truth. In the truth. You ought to love the truth more than you love what your kin folks think. 
So I want to say this morning, guns aren't, is not our problem. You say, well, it's just too easy for these kids to get all the guns. Let me remind you. May I remind you, you turn the clock back a hundred years in the Old West days, cowboy and Indian days. All kids had access to guns then. Most kids owned guns then. Most kids knew how to shoot guns in the cowboy and Indian day. Am I right? Sure. Any kid could get a hold of a gun. And none of them ever took a gun and went to school and shot his classmates. But we know it's never on in the history books. Never happened that we know of. Boy, you know, the president said this, we're going to control guns. They said this, this how are these kids getting these guns? How are these kids getting these guns? Well, the better question is, what put it in these kids' mind to do such a thing? May I tell you? Would you like for me to tell you? You don't, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. And I'm sweet. I'm a sweet person, you just don't know me. I'm a sweet person, I just got a sour job this morning. Amen? I wonder, I wonder, I wish they'd let me on CNN, I'd do a little presentation. And you know what I'd do? I would show a clip from Natural Born Killers, the most popular movie in recent years. Where this boy and girl just gets a gun and just goes into places just blowing people away. And it is a proven fact that there were mimic killings right after that movie. And a slasher, I told all these films where people just shot, shot, bang, bang. Our kids see that every week on television, every weekend at the movies where they get desensitized, where they think life is meaningless and don't mean nothing. Why don't somebody come up and say that Hollywood is greatly responsible for what happened, for making kids think murder is no big deal? I wonder how come somebody hadn't put Pearl Jam's video on the, on CNN and Larry King and 2020 and Barbara Walters and MSNBC and all them put Pearl Jam's video, Jeremy Spogan, on TV. Paul Jam's video, Jeremy Spoken, shows the rock music star on, and it's not a bad sounding song, really. It's not, it's kind of a cool little tune. You could like it. It actually has a melody in it. The guy can actually carry a tune. And this little boy comes into his classroom, the entire video. He sits in there. All his other classmates are sitting around. He sits there like this for about two or three minutes, like a day of school. Looks at the teacher, looks at his classmates. All of a sudden, takes out a gun and just blows everybody away. And it shows them they're like plastic bodies with blood running out of their mouth. And all them kills everybody, kills himself. And at the end of the video, they're all sitting there dead like that. And Jeremy's looking around, you know, and I think he killed himself or something. Wonder you reckon that? Uh, see, they didn't have that back in the old West days. They say there's no proof that kids imitate that television. Oh boy. They say, now we can't prove that movies influence kids' behavior. But they sell commercials for $100,000 for 30 seconds of for toothpaste. Now TV don't influence people's behavior, right? Uh, I can't hear you. TV don't influence people's behavior. Now, what they see on TV don't make them do nothing. And then we'll spend $100,000 on a 30-second commercial that don't influence nobody's behavior. I mean, that's not going to make nobody go out and buy that toothpaste, is it? Mountain Dew, Pepsi, Coke. Listen, they don't put them commercials on there thinking it ain't going to influence your behavior. They think if we make this thing look good enough, people are going to go out and buy it. Amen. Amen. Then we come to the movies, everybody says... Well, just because you see it on the movie. I watched the movie and I didn't go out and kill nobody. Well, I watched the Pepsi commercial and I didn't go out and buy a Coke. I did buy a Pepsi. But it ain't because of the commercial, it's because it's the best. Made in the Carolinas. Hallelujah. Amen. All that. Amen. No, I shouldn't have said that. They're supporting perverts, right? I heard they're supporting. Pepsi's supporting gun control. <laughs> uh, listen. Listen. What's wrong with our schools today? Music, movies, 
and morals. That's it. We got the world's music. We got the world's movie. Don't you tell me if a, if a, if a Nike commercial comes on and shows a guy going like this and he goes, bah! he's dunking the ball like that. And everybody says, cool, mama, I want them shoes. Don't you tell me if a FUBU commercial comes on and says, FUBU is the shirt for you. Don't you know that parent, the kids ain't going to say, Mama, I want a FUBU shirt. Mama, I want a FUBU shirt. Take me to the mall and buy me a FUBU shirt. Don't you tell me if a commercial can't make them buy a shirt or tennis shoes that when it shows two killers glamorizing killers and glamorizing gram- Glamorizing murder and all that. Don't you think for a minute, man, that it ain't gonna make people want to imitate it. Amen? Amen. Common sense. What's wrong with that schools in America is? I, listen, when you take the Bible out, you create a vacuum. You make a vacuum. And something's going to fill that vacuum. In 1963 and 2, our Supreme Court voted 6 to 1 to remove God and the Bible out of our public school system. And brother, it's went downhill ever since. The answer is not building better buildings. The answer is not a better computer lab. I'm not against it. I'm not saying they're all wicked. I know we got some good teachers. We have some good principals. We have some good school teachers that are doing the best they can. But their hands are tied. They're not allowed to say, Hey kids, we've got something to fill up the vacuum that's in your life. Jesus Christ is the answer. He can help you. He can give you something to live for. Listen, brother, what's wrong with America's school today is God left out of it. Amen. Anybody ought to say amen to all of y'all. God's left out. God's left out. You say, well, Brother Danny, Christian, I know, we're living in the same environment. I'm not saying Christian schools are perfect. How many kids we got in here, students of our school? Raise your hand, please. Raise your hand. All of you raise your hand. There's a lot of them in here. Raise your hand. Keep them raised. You better, you listen to me. I'm nice, but I'm going to look mean as I can look. You ever, you know, you kids better never try to pull some stunt. Like making a bomb threat or bring. Listen, if you bring a gun to school, I'm giving him authority right now to take it away from me and shoot you with it. <laughs> well, that'll go all over town, won't it? If you don't want to get shot, you better not bring no gun to our school. Amen. Amen. Preach it, brother. Hell no. Something worse will happen to you. You make a bomb for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Having a good time today, ain't we? Amen. Amen. That's true. You know what's wrong with that school system, brother? They're influenced by the world's music, morals, and, and movies. Right. Movies. Amen? Amen? That's why they didn't kill their, ki- their ki- classmates in the old West days. They had morals. Right. You killed your enemies, and that's it. They don't stay alive. Like a war. And I'm not in favor of killing anybody. Amen? Amen. But I'm telling you, if you outlaw guns, they'll do it with knives or bombs. You going to outlaw knives? A lot of people get killed with knives every week. Are we going to outlaw? Knife control. That'll be next. Amen. It ain't going to do the job. It ain't going to do the job. We went uh, to Kermit, West Virginia the other day, me and Brother Ernie. And I believe this, and I want to ask you all to help me do this. I believe the answer for that crusade is for us getting in that school. Tug Valley High School. Pray for it. Pray for it. We visited it Thursday. We walked right in. Nobody said nothing to us. We just walked right in. Uh, Found two of my cousins in the lunchroom, Julie and, and Casey. And I said, Casey, we're here. Take us around and show us around. We just started walking through. First thing we seen, first thing we seen, boys and girls out hugged up, sitting on each other's laps. You know, it's been a long time since I've been to public school, and I said, good night. Is that the way they let them do? Boy, some of y'all are getting quiet on me this morning. I'm worried about you. I'm just, I'm just your preacher trying to tell you what's right and wrong. I'm not, I'm not a politician. 
I'm not, I'm not campaigning for nothing or anything like that. I, I couldn't believe it. They were just sitting around all hugged up like nothing. And there's this whole gang of boys over here and they're shooting pennies, you know, gambling uh, against the wall. We went in and you could feel demons in that place. You could feel the devil. You know, it's, I usually hang around churches and stuff and everything. I know what the devil feels like and I felt the devil in that place. And then they started telling me all this weird stuff. They said, them kids, that every one of them will testify to it, that chairs move across that hallway and nobody touching them. They said, the cheerleaders get together and have seances and call on evil spirits. Tug, they call it drug valley instead of tug valley. They said, the day we was there, a boy set his desk on fire. Two other girls were in the office for getting in a fight. My cousin said, she said, I seen seven fights in one day. I said, how many of them was Ken to us? She said, it's two of them. And I said, I said, did you all stick together? Yes, we do. <laughs> we, we all take up for each other. And, uh, they, they, I mean, girls fighting. They said, not long ago, the principal come dragging a girl through the lunchroom and another girl was hanging on to her hair. So he's dragging two girls, trying to get her one away from him. He was dragging her, and the other one had to hold that girl's hair and jerked out a handful of her hair. That's where we're going to go sing, kids, in the auditorium. Don't worry. Don't you worry about a thing. You're safer than you was on top of the State Building. A lot safer. Man, that scared me to death. We had a hundred running all over New York City, and I couldn't even find half of them. That was scary. We're safe at Tug Daddy. Amen. And we're going to go sing there, Lord willing. Hey, hey, do you care what would happen if, if God's Spirit come down in that little high school up there and his kids got in there and a power of God hit that place? That's what's wrong with America's school system. We push God out. And when you push God out, it's just like, uh, hit the lights. Well, we'll turn all these lights out. What's what happens when the lights go out? Watch. You know what happens? Darkness comes in. Darkness can't come in till the lights go out. Hey, darkness can't overpower light. Darkness can't get in till light goes out. You know who wins? If you put darkness and light in the same room, who wins? Darkness don't overpower light. Light overpowers darkness. The only way darkness can get in is cut the lights out. Hey, turn them back on now. When lights come on, darkness has to leave. You know why it's so dark in the schools of America? The lights went out 35 years ago and darkness settled in and somebody needs to turn the lights back on. Amen. This, this ain't a, this ain't a commercial for our school. I tell you, thank God we got a school sitting out there where the lights are on. We had a great week of school. We didn't have to cancel any days. We didn't have to send nobody home early. And as I said, we better not, buddy, if you don't want to die early there. And I'm going to tell you what. Amen. Amen. Thank God we had a great week of school. The Lord blessed. We had testimonies on the radio this morning. You're going to get to hear some more tonight. You know, our school is the only school in McDowell County. Our school is the only school in McDowell County that gets invited all over the country to come and share what we got with other schools. Yeah. Being another in this county or surrounding counties. Yeah. Somebody said, well, I don't think... Buddy, we got something good. We ought to brag on it once in a while. Yeah. Hallelujah for New Mountain Christian School. Thank God when you walk in there, you can hear Christian music and the Bibles in every classroom and the lockers and brother, the, prayer, or the teachers open up for the word of prayer and have devotion. And you'll sometimes after hours, you'll see a teacher sitting out there counseling a kid and showing them scriptures in the Bible, helping them make decisions in their life. Not counting all the other junk that they don't have to be around. Thank God for a Christian school. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, Be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. The Bible says, Train up a child in the way they should go. It's a parent's responsibility. You say, Well, my kid just won't touch where all his friends are. Ask, ask Carrie if she got her choice growing up. You don't give them a choice whether they want to go to the dentist or not. Well, I don't want to turn him against it. You turn him against going to the dentist. 
He'll thank you one day when all his teeth ain't rotted out of his head. Kids are not old enough or spiritual enough or smart enough to choose where they want to go to school or church. Hey, you hear me? Thank God we've got the light on out there. They're not smart enough, they're not spiritual enough, and they're not old enough to choose what they want. That's what God gave them to you for, so you could raise them. Amen? Our school's the only school I know of. Our basketball team, little boys look up to basketball players, three out of our starting five preachers. And they jump up here and preach any time you call on them. Amen? You say, well, what's the big deal about that? The big deal about that is little kids have heroes that are big kids, and that's who they want to be like when they grow up. That's called positive peer pressure, brother. You can't beat that set up. You can't beat that. All the preaching in the world ain't going to have as much effect on them kids as what they see those older kids do. One day a bunch of our kids were sitting in on the bleachers in there at lunchtime, and we was all singing a Christian song. All of us singing a Christian song. I was in there singing with them. And I saw these little kids, and they were lined up going in the lunchroom, and they was all just going. And they were singing word for word, watching them big kids. In their little mind, they were saying, that's what I want to do when I get big. I want to sing about the Lord at lunch. You take them to some of the schools where the light's gone out and see what them little eyes see and those little ears hear. And you know what they think? They think that's cool. That's the way I want to be. And you can't tell me it don't have an influence on them. It's impossible. Well, so-and-so made it. Yeah, and they're one out of a thousand too. They're one out of a thousand. Every kid is different. Ain't no two kids alike. And we don't bat a thousand. Christian schools don't bat a thousand. Just because a kid goes to a Christian school, don't guarantee they're going to be right. Don't you get me wrong. Our church don't bat a thousand. We, we messed up. We struck out. We missed the ball lots of times. I have. We have. Some of our kids have done some stupid things. But that's the exception and not the rule. The exception proves the rule. There's an exception once in a while, and that just proves there is such a thing as a rule. Generally, it's the best thing for them. Generally. Amen? I'm going to be saying more about that before the school year's out. But I'll tell you what's wrong with our schools in America. People say, well, I don't think you ought to mix religion and education. You ought to mix religion with everything. I'm talking about the right kind. It ought to be mixed with your habits, your pastime, your education, your vocation, everything there is. God is to be first in every area of our lives. According to the book. According to this book. Amen? What's wrong with our schools in America? And let's please pray. I'd hate to live in Washington, D.C. or where I had no choice. I, I, you say, well, if I, had, I know what I'd do if I didn't have a choice. I'd homeschool. You're not smart enough. I can learn. I can read. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. I'd hate to live in Washington, D.C. and put my kids on a bus. And not, I mean, before all these tragedies happen. Knives. Drugs. Promiscuity. All these things happening just the norm. Not the exception, the norm. Somebody said, well, I think if you try to shelter them too much, they won't be able to cope with... No, no, no problem there. No problem. Kids in Christian schools know more now than their grandma did when she was 40 and had five kids. Amen? You know that these kids ain't sheltered. You say, well, I think they should be allowed to find out. Okay, show them child pornography and bestiality if you think they should know everything. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You, know that ain't, you know that ain't right. You know a child don't have to know all the filthy, rotten, nasty things that goes on out there. It's better for them not to know it. Thank God if they don't know about it. Everything you can protect them from and show them from, hallelujah, they won't have to deal with it later on in life when the devil starts trying to bring it back in their mind. If they never see a dirty movie, that's good. That's good. What's wrong with our school? We turn the lights out. And I'm not throwing any stones. Lord knows I'm praying for them. And it breaks my heart what's been happening. I've been saying all along, I've always said it. 
The answer is, when you turn the lights out, the darkness is going to come in. There ain't no other way out. And the only hope is turn the light back on. Let's stand by our head. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want us to pray. The school system has your kids and my kids longer than anybody else. They spend more time at school than they do at church. They spend more time at school than they do at home, many of them. Wake hours. They spend more time at school than anywhere else. That means the school is a major, major influence on your kids. You better be careful as a parent. You better be careful as a parent. Keep your kids to live right. You better spend a lot of time with them, talking to them. Even for in Christian school, it don't make no difference. Spend time instructing them. Training them the way they should go. God's dealing with your heart this morning. You need to pray. Some's already come. Parents, we need to pray for our school. We need to pray for our public school system. We have kids in our church and all the school systems. and We need to pray for them that God will bless them and take care of them. Pray for their teachers. Pray for the administration all over McDowell County. Pray for the superintendent. He has a very hard job. Let's pray for him. Let's pray for him. God help us this morning. Lord, have your way in our hearts. We know that a church or a school or a government or a society that turns the lights out has no other course but to be flooded with darkness. Please help us to turn the lights back on in these last days. In Jesus' name we